Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the end of the year Any Action Sportscast recap. We're going to recap how we performed our first year doing this in the year 2022. Before we do that, guys, I want to give a huge shout out to everyone that's watched our videos from the beginning. To see our channel where it is now after our first year is pretty awesome. Uh, another big, big shout out to my boy Martin, who's a producer. If you were a fan back in the day when we first started, it was me and him. Um, some of our best moments were with him on the channel as well doing episodes with him when bryce mitchell called in man it was an all-time moment uh so shout out to martin man we'll hopefully have him on on some episodes in the future next year so big shout out to my guy martin but yeah time to get to it our 2022 results we finished 19.18 units profit our units are $40, so we finished the year positive $767. I'm pretty proud of those numbers, really stoked to see the outcome on the year. I'm a pretty busy guy, man. I work two jobs, so editing videos, tape studying, getting all this stuff out really does take a lot of time. So to come out the year positive uh, 19 units, so units are $40, like I said. I'm pretty proud of those numbers, guys. We have 140 subscribers on the channel right now. It's pretty mind-blowing considering where we started, me and Martin. Um, thanks a ton of all you guys, but I'm going to share my screen so we can kind of go through it all together here. Um, as you can see right here on the bottom, toward the bottom, we won 24 events this year. And we lost 17. Um, that comes out to 59% won and 41% lost. Um, I will be honest, I wish I was a little bit higher. I was shooting for a 60% on the winning events there. Uh, it sucks. That last event really sucked to lose because, like I said, I was shooting for positive 25 units. That would have put us at $1,000 on the year, but uh, we took a loss on that last event. But, yeah, we're going to go through real quick. In the beginning, guys, I was betting way too much. Um, I sort of tapered that off toward the middle and end of the year. But also in the beginning, uh, my straight picks were really bad. You can tell right here, a lot of red. And what really helped us was in the beginning, we kept those losses small. We didn't really receive a huge loss until UFC 273 right there in April. Um, if we did take a loss, they were relatively small to start the year. And then that's another thing, man. Uh, the losses toward the end of the year, I couldn't maintain them. I couldn't limit them to the small losses. They ended up kind of just getting away from me when I did lose. And another thing is, to my surprise, I'm actually worse on pay-per-views, man. I do better on fight nights than I do pay-per-views, which I thought going into the year was going to be the opposite. Um, and I think that's because I just have, I lose discipline on pay-per-views. I feel like I'm just betting like every fight or just a ton of fights, man. I got to really got to get more discipline with those. But yeah, early on, my straight picks were bad and my parlays and, or my, you know, my props and my parlays were sort of carrying us there. And then that sort of shifted toward the spring and going into summer. My straight picks, money line picks were doing really well. Uh, sort of fizzled out there toward the end. I'll be honest, I did kind of feel a little bit of a burnout there toward the end of the year, but I'll scroll down to the bottom so you guys can see the timeline. Um, Relatively good to, you know, trending upward pretty much the whole time, ascending, uh, kind of a bit of a rut here. And then we peak at UFC 277 there, and then we just kind of spiral, guys. We ended up going on a three-week losing streak here, and this is what really burned us. Um, UFC Fight Night Vera vs. Cruz was our worst night. I believe we lost, let's scroll up. Um, yeah, because it was our worst event. So we lost 8.16 units on that event. 8.16 units on one event, guys. That at that time was close to 30% of our profit of the year. Uh, that was really, really bad. We got reverse swept. Um, just brutal. And then we followed that with another sweep. We got reverse swept again back to back weeks. So in two weeks, we lost 11 units. Uh, just really put us behind the eight ball to, to finish the year out there. But it was at UFC 278 where we got swept again. And I was actually at this event, man. Uh, it sucked because you have to sit there and watch all of your bet lose. Lose, you know, like, I just not one by one, one by one, one by one. They all fall. They all go down. It just I couldn't win a bet that night. But I will say, man, shout out to my boy Preston. Uh, we went to the event together. And I ended up winning, like, a weird VIP thing. And we ended up getting access to, like, this buffet area, a lounge type place, where it was a ton of fighters, like, I was, I was sitting, drinking, eating with Brandon Moreno at one point. Uh, it was pretty bizarre. Like, just sitting there like, what the hell is this? Like, how do we end up here? But it was a crazy, dope event. It was actually my first UFC pay-per-view I've ever been to. And I lost every single bet, man. It was, it was wild. Um, but yeah, dude, the Leon Edwards knockout. We had really good seats. Anik and Rogan and them were not that far in front of us. 
And I'll never forget just seeing Usman's head like just roll back and his eyes just being back all stiff. And he was like shaking. A lot of people don't realize like his foot was like vibrating. Like if you go back and watch it, I was looking down on him. I was like, oh my God. Uh, it was, that was wild um, to see. First ever pay-per-view I've ever been to delivered, man. I don't think I'll ever see anything crazier than that. Headshot bang on the, on the mic. The crowd going crazy. They played the Rocky music. That was unforgettable, man. Uh, shout to Preston. Like I said, Salt Lake City, great town. Uh, ton of fun. So much fun. Just sucked that we lost all our bets. Go back to the screen here. And so, yeah, guys, toward the end of the year, we sort of just fizzled out. Couldn't really get it going. And like I said, yeah, I couldn't really contain the losses. They ended up being big losses. Even the last one, five-point units on the last event. Like, what the hell? Uh, but yeah, the first year, learned a ton of lessons, guys. Um, just knowing when to go big, knowing when to parlay, when to, like, lay off a fight. You don't have to bet every fight. I think that's what my big thing was, oh, especially with the pay-per-views. Like, I just felt like I, I wanted action on every fight, and I don't got to be doing that going forward. And but like I said, man, I'm pretty proud of the numbers. 19 units profit. I worked two jobs, and I ended up starting school in the back half of the year. And it's not a surprise to me that our best run was when I got a little bit of a break from one of my jobs in the summer there. And... And we ended up tailing off when it picked back up. Not making any excuses or anything. Not trying to do that. I'm just playing. But yeah, man. The rest of the show is going to be kind of like quick hitters. I'm going to go over our best bets, our worst bets, our most degenerate bets. Um, they're just funny little stuff like that. So thanks so much, guys, again, for watching our videos this year. We really appreciate it. It's so dope to see how far we've come since when we started, me and Martin. But yeah, man. Let me know what you think about the rest of the video who your votes are for these topics, some categories here. And we'll see you guys next year. Peace. Our nominees for best bet of 2022. Number one, JJ Ulrich versus Jillian Robertson over two and a half rounds, minus 125 for five units. Number two, Shafkok Rachmanov versus Carlson Harris, minus 225 for five units. And number three, Bobby Green versus Islam Makachev under two and a half rounds minus 110 for five units. The winner is Bobby Green versus Islam Makachev under two and a half rounds for minus 110. I wanted to go with Jillian Robinson and JJ Aldridge over here on this pick, but I honestly didn't think that was one second where that under wasn't going to hit in that Islam Makachev fight against Bobby Green. It was one of those fights where as soon as Islam grabbed him, it was essentially over on the ground. Um, took him about, what, 40 seconds to get it going, and it was a wrap. It was a catch weight as well, so we were getting extra weight on Islam. Just an unreal circumstance there. There was no way I thought that Bobby Green was going to last 12 and a half minutes without getting submitted or pounded out by Islam Makachev. Our nominees for worst bet of 2022. Number one. Hamzat Chemaev to defeat Gilbert Burns inside the distance, minus 170 for five units. Number two, Martin Bidet to beat Chris Barnett at minus 220 for 4.4 units. That bet won, but it's still nominated for this topic. And number three, Oday Osborne versus Tyson Nam to win, minus 250 for five units. And the winner is... Tyson Nam, five units at minus 250. Now, theoretically, the way the fight played out, Hamza at minus 170 inside the distance is uh, a bit of a stretch, but he was close to finishing burn, so I'll give him that. But Tyson Nam got need into next year and instantly lost that bet. Probably the worst way you can lose $200 if you ask me. Just a terrible, terrible bet. I was actually at work, which made it even worse. Uh, I knew the fight was coming up, but I, was at, I wasn't in a spot where I could check my phone. So I had to go out and, and obviously go to work. And then I come back and I have a couple texts from my buddies like, oh, sorry. And like, oh, man, what happened? What happened? And I'm like, oh, no, like, this is bad. I look knockout of the year contender type knockout. He gets absolutely blasted via flying knee and we lose five units. Worst bet of the year. Our nominees for biggest bag collector in 2022. Number one, Kevin Holland. Kevin stepping up on short notice to save the pay-per-view and fight Hamzat Shemaev. I'm sure he got the bag from the UFC to do that. Number two, Sam Alvey. I know he didn't win a fight or collect a winning bonus in this year, but the fact that he even blasted to this year, 2022, is amazing. Number three, Renato Moicanu. 
This guy fought three times, one on short notice where he did get the bag against Rafael uh, Dos Anjos to come in on day's notice and save the co-main on that pay-per-view. Shout out to him. And we saw his post-fight speech after that. The winner is... Renato Moikanu, how could it be anybody else? Big money Moikanu wants money. Give him money. Um, this guy sort of just blew up toward the end of the year. Really good end of the year for him. Um, good start to the year as well. Beating Hernandez the way he did. Absolutely blasted him. Kind of got his ass kicked by RDA, but got paid for it. And then just took advantage of his spotlight on that last pay-per-view and delivered one of the best speeches of the year post-fight. So the winner is... Renato, Money, Moikanu. I have two more categories that I want to go over with you guys, but I'd rather have you guys let me know in the comments. Who was the UFC's biggest bag fumbler this year? Who dropped the bag? Who messed up? Who missed out on a big opportunity and didn't come through? I'll say, you can nominate Hamza for missing weight and screening up that pay-per-view. You can nominate the Arizona Athletic Commission for stealing that belt from Charles Oliveira. There's a lot of ways you can go for the UFC's biggest bag fumbler. And the last topic who was your most degenerate bet this year? I had 4.4 units on Marin Bidet. It's hard to top that, honestly. Probably the lowest level fight for the most amount of money or fighter uh, for the most amount of money I've ever bet. Uh, definitely never want to do anything like that again. I do remember I had over two units on Loma Luke Boomy, who I actually think is not that bad and a pretty good fighter herself. But I did find myself you know, going out there and betting two units on women's MMA. Um, five units on a women's MMA over as well this year, but that hit, so I'm not going to count that as a degenerate play. Uh, really appreciate all you guys, man. Like I said earlier in the video, thanks so much for the support. Thanks so much for watching our videos. And like I said, let me know who you have in those last two categories, and we'll see you guys next year in 2023 where we'll continue to win this money, guys. See you guys next year. Peace.